Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my don't be afraid, Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Yeah, that's what it's all about. This series, uh, Then Sings My Soul, A Natural Response to a Love Relationship with God. Again, welcome if you've joined us late in the room or if you're joining us late online. Uh, I am Scott, and I'm the lead pastor here, and I have the fun privilege to get to share God's Word and life with those of you who call Waterline home. Uh, it is national... I haven't done this in a while, so here we are. It is National Nylon Stocking Day, all right? Totally makes me think of my grandmother and my aunt, and if she's watching, I'm not going to tell the story because I know you'd be mortified um, about nylon stockings, um, but uh, yes, ni National Nylon Stocking Day. It's also National Chocolate Chip Day today, right? Yeah, I figured that would get something, something from you. Um, and uh, it, but it is also um, in, in a much more serious way, Police Officer Memorial Day, where we take a moment to remember police officers who have given their uh, lives uh, in order to protect us. Um, and it's been Police Officer uh, kind of Appreciation Week, and we just want to say thank you to those of you who serve in that way uh, to us. Um, and so I, I didn't want to go. We don't often kind of look at those calendars, but I felt like that was something I wanted to at least, at least just take a moment to say thank you uh, for the way that you serve our communities. It is Then Sings My Soul series. Um, and as I said, it's, this is just really a, an honest conversation about what, it, what is our natural response to God, answering the question that our soul sings. Um, uh, and we're answering these questions like, what is my soul, right? And we talked about that on Mother's Day just last week. Uh, what does it mean for my soul to sing? Uh, what is my natural response to God? What do I want my response to God to look like? After we take a look at what my natural response is, which we're going to do in, a, in another week or so, we're going to ask ourselves, okay, if that's what's natural, is that what I want? And if it is, how do I enhance it? And if it's not, if my natural response to God maybe isn't everything I want it to be, how do I change that? We're going to answer that question in the coming weeks. Um, and then how does that desired response become a natural one? So um, <clears throat> this is a really powerful series. I've been saying this all along. And I really want to encourage you to take as much of this in as you possibly can. On Mother's Day last week, we talked about what is our soul, and we kind of really quickly looked at the fact that we kind of are a triune being very similar to creating God's image, who's a triune God. We have our body, which kind of interacts with the physical, right? A physical world, our touch, our smell, our sounds, the taste, you know. We have our spirit, which, so we've got the physical realm. Our spirit is what we're born, our dead, right? When, but when we come to know Jesus, we become alive in Christ, and our spirit comes alive, and then we can interact with God in the spiritual realm in a way that is vibrant. It's the way that we kind of, we, we sense God in the room, we, we experience God, and we experience the, the life of Christ, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within us, and it, it, it quickens our spirit. But now what our focus is, is our soul. And our soul, we talked about last week, is the most real part of us. Like our soul is that part of us that is intangible and eternal. It, it, it lives forever. It's that kind of inside of us that actually is a hybrid. It interacts in the spiritual realm. It interacts in the physical realm, and it ties it all together in our emotional, relational realm, and, uh, and, and, and it, it interacts with all the parts of what God has created. And so that our soul is this, this, this incredible thing. And so we, we looked at that last week. So our main theme in this series, I'm asking you to consider what is your natural response to God? Determine if you want to change that or not, and then determine how we do it. Today, I want to take just a few minutes to answer the question, how does my soul sing? How does my soul sing? So in a way, it's kind of 
like one of those questions like asking a perfectly healthy person, asking themselves, how do I walk? Or how do I breathe? It's just kind of you're alive and it kind of just happens. So our souls don't really learn to sing any more than our bodies learn to breathe. Um, you, you may think, well, I'm not really a singer. I'm not quite sure my soul is singing. And if I did, no one's going to want to hear it. Um, but if you, if you will just take a minute, I think that you are going to find and discover today that every soul has a song. So how does my soul sing? I think maybe a better question to start with might be, what does my soul sing? What does my soul sing? Scripture has, a, there's, there's, there's a list of things that Scripture says our soul sings. That our soul can sing sadness. Our soul can sing longingly. Our soul can sing hunger. It can thirst. Our soul can be dismayed. Our soul can, can be assured. Our soul can yearn. Our soul can feel and sing anger. It can sing revenge. It can sing love. It can sing joy. It can sing contentment. And the words go on and on and on. Essentially, our soul sings the full range of emotions one can express. This is why some people say the soul is the seat of our emotions. You, maybe you've heard that before, that our soul is the seat of our emotions. It's the, it's the emotional en engine, so to speak, of who we are. And that's kind of true and, and kind of not, but I won't get into that today. Mary, the mother of Jesus, responded to the news that she was going to be bear the son of God with this, this Mary song that we've all heard before. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord or magnifies God. How my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Interestingly enough, even Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, now my soul is deeply troubled should I pray, Father, save me from this hour, but this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Have you ever thought that God, that Jesus in his divine self had a soul? Fully God, fully man. The Bible's full of soul singing full of it. Probably the most recorded soul of all time is King David. Much of his soul is singing, is recorded in the book of Psalms. Uh, and, and it's just, just song after song after song of David that came out of and rose out of David's soul. We, we hear songs and, uh, of David's soul recorded at his highest heights. Elizabeth read one of them today. Another one is Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there's no water. I've seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory, your unfaithfulness failing love is better than life itself. Oh, how I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking about you, meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely, but those plotting to destroy me will continue to ruin. They will go down into the depths of the earth. They will die by the sword and become the food of jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear to tell the truth will praise him while liars will be silenced. David was having a good day. But the Psalms also record David in his lowest lows. Psalm 6, didn't take long to get into it. Lord, don't rebuke me. Don't rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your rage. God, have, have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I'm sick at heart. How long? Oh, Lord, until you restore me, return, oh, Lord, and rescue me. Save me because of all your unfailing love. For the dead do not remember you. Who can praise you from the grave? I'm worn out from sobbing all night. I flood my bed with weeping. He was a drama queen. <laughs> Drenching it with tears. My vision is blurred by grief. My eyes are worn out because of all my enemies. 
Not a good day for David. Different songs, different days, same soul. Because God made our souls for songs. God made our soul for song. But although God made our souls for song, our souls sing ultimately to, for him. This is why God created our souls, so that we can sing to him in the good days and in the bad days. Our souls sing in all sorts of situations. I sound like Dr. Seuss today. (laughs) So many S's today. Um, Our souls sing at sports events. Many of us can, oh, yeah, I get that. Our souls sing at weddings. Our souls sing at funerals. Our souls sing at birthday parties. I did one just two this past weekend. In stadiums with tens of thousands of people, our soul sings. And in the quiet, quiet, desperate places like bedrooms and bathrooms where tears flow silently, our souls sing. Our souls were made for song. So our soul song is the conscious expression of our feelings. What does our soul sing? Our soul sings feelings. Do you know there's a difference between emotion and feelings? There's a difference between emotion and feelings. Psychology even is is, is studying this right now. Emotions are basic automatic responses to some event or message um, or stimuli, like fear or anger, sadness, disgust, joy, surprise. Those are like the six main emotions. Feelings are the way we interpret those emotions and give them expression. So emotions are automatic. Feelings are how we interpret them. Things like satisfaction, optimism, gratitude, jealousy, intimidation, empowerment. These are feelings that express emotions. The main difference, I'm going to say it again, between emotions and feelings is that emotions are produced unconsciously. They're they're automatic. And feelings are conscious forms or expressions of emotions. So we experience emotion and we express feeling. So we experience joy we feel happiness, we may feel gratefulness. We experience anger, we may feel mad or irritated or maybe even guilty. We experience disgust, right? Um, And we may feel sad, but we might also feel humor. When I was writing this, I'm thinking of like, how like my kids watch these pimple videos all the time. I mean, if you got teens, you know they're doing it. Maybe you're doing it and not telling anybody. But uh, you know, you see those disgusting like videos on on Facebook, and like you're like, I can't stop watching that. It's like a fly to a light, right? And you get it's like totally disgusting, but it's kind of like cool at the same time. You know, like like we we experience something, we feel something. We can experience surprise and feel excitement or anxiousness or fear out of that. In each case, our souls give voice to the feelings we feel. This is what scripture means when it says, out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. Out of our soul, our mouth speaks. We express feelings. Matthew 12, 34, Jesus said, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of? Luke 6, 45, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings out evil things out of the evil stored in his heart, for the mouth speaks what the heart is, what? Full of. What does the Bible mean? What does it mean when it talks about our heart being full of stuff? Jesus said in Matthew 6, 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. Your eyes are healthy. Your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Even then, the light within you is darkness. How great is that darkness? Our souls song, sorry, our soul sings 
the songs we teach it. Our soul sings the songs that we teach it. You've heard me say this before. It's, it's like garbage in, garbage out, right? The world in, the world out. Darkness in, darkness out. Light in, light out. Jesus in, Jesus out. Our soul sings the songs we teach it. What we meditate on, what we think about, what we entertain ourselves with, what we read, what we watch, what we think about, the scripture says, so a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Our soul, our soul, which we established last week, is the most real part of us, will sing the songs that it's most familiar with. Our songs will, our soul will sing the songs it's most familiar with. As I like to say, the atmosphere you permit in your life is the product you'll produce in your life. If you were to stop and consider the songs, the feelings, the emotions you feed yourself with the most, do you see a correlation in your life with the way you live and the way you think or the song your soul sings? Many of us, myself included, we struggle with things like anxiety and fear or feeling of tension and mistrust or even discontentment. And when you look around, it's like, well, yeah, everybody feels that way. It's, it's, it's normal. Everybody feels that way, so it must just be the way. But could it be, could it be that there's just too many people around tuned in to the wrong station? Could it be that there's just so many people listening to the same junk that the junk just seems like all there is? It reminds me of a saying of like, like, to the crowd that is rushing to the end of the cliff, the guy running in the opposite direction looks like a fool. Could it be could it be that those around us are just so plugged into the wrong stuff that we don't even know what the right stuff feels like? In 1989, the U.S. military had surrounded the Vatican Embassy in Panama City where drug trafficker and terrorist Manuel Noriega was hiding. 1989, maybe you remember it. Not wanting, some of you won't, I know you, somebody told me today they were born in 1989 because I told them I graduated high school in 1989. <laughs> anyway, uh, not wanting to damage or storm the embassy, the military surrounded the complex with Humvees equipped with huge speakers, huge speakers, and they barraged the building with music so loud that it couldn't be ignored. The military compiled a playlist of featured hits packed with for their irony and their value including, I fought the law and the law won, right? The, uh, by The Clash, Panama by, the, by Van Halen, U2's All I Want Is You, right? Bruce Cockburn's If I Had a Rocket Launcher, and Guns N' Roses' Welcome to the Jungle. Over and over and over and over and over again. And they weren't quite sure if this was going to work. It was the first time that they've kind of used this tactic in, 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 like a, in a major event. But it only took three short days. Three short days for Noriega, who was said to be an opera lover, to emerge and surrender. Don't kid yourselves. God made our souls for song. Could it be that we have allowed ourselves as a society to passively and unwittingly open ourselves up to the songs of the mistrust and anxiety and fear that the world blares at us from their Humvees through TV and music and video games and social media and the 24-7 news channels. Like psychological warfare, the world is bombarding us with noise to wear us down and surrender and get distracted by politics and all kinds of other junk. Peace, we give it up for fear. Joy, we give up for despair. Righteousness for sin, light for darkness, love for selfishness. Our soul song has become a familiar chorus of fear, mistrust, and anxiety. 
And we have rehearsed those songs through conversation with our neighbors and our families and our friends. And essentially, we've created a whole choir, a chorus of anxiety and fear and all the junk that the world has been bombarding us for with this psychological musical warfare, so to speak. But what if? What if? What if we were to change the channel? What if you and I decided we were going to flip the station and begin to feed our souls with a different channel? If we started to march to the beat of a different drummer? What if we aligned our hearts and minds and souls with the songs that God has our souls to sing? Songs of righteousness, songs of hope, songs of peace, songs of joy. What would happen? What would happen if our souls rehearsed? What if rather than rehearsing with our neighbors and our friends songs of anxiety in our biblical communities, we began to celebrate what God was doing? We began to share songs of faith and songs of hope and songs of joy. What would happen to you if that was your song? If your soul sung songs like that, it would change your whole world. What would happen if our souls rehearsed and we joined in chorus the songs God has written for our souls? That's the question today. What would happen? Would you stand with me? We're going to do that right now. We're going to sing this song. It's an older song. It's going to be familiar to you. Don't just bob along and follow the bouncing ball. Sing this song. I mean sing this song. Consider your song as we sing this song. I'm going to come back in a minute. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing Jesus Christ the risen Lord. Did you feel the people tremble? singers roar when the lost begin to sing of Jesus Christ the saving one we can see the God moving mighty river through the nations when young and old will turn to Jesus
come back obviously that wasn't true <laughs> uh, I, I mean that is the prayer of this pastor's heart that we would be a people whose souls would sing songs of hope songs of joy songs of justice and love and unity that we would do that together in one accord So that our streets sound different. Your home sounds different. Your home will not sound different until your heart and mind sound different. If you want a different home, you need a different heart. If you want a different relationship with your friends, you need a different heart. If you want a different relationship and experience in this church, you need a different heart. We, our souls were made for songs. I'm telling you, your soul sings every day. And you have the choice about what that soul sings. Like earworms. Right? Baby shark doo doo. Right? Like nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. You're welcome. Nobody wants that. <laughs> but when we fill our souls with truth, if we believe that what we really, if we believe that what we believe is really real, about the power of God's word that it's living and active, able to pierce between the division of soul and mind and heart and the intent of it, then feed your heart and your mind with God's word and that's what will come out. Your song will be different. But if you spend your whole time searching for everything from conspiracy theories to how to plant the right tulip, that's all you're gonna sing about. Get your heart and mind into the Word of God. May it be the first thing you do in the morning. I don't care if it's 10 seconds long, but start there. Elizabeth tells a story about a time where she just was like on like HGTV like all the time and seeing all these beautiful new things and countertops and this. And the more she watched it, the more discontented she, she was with a home that we had, which was beautiful. But she's, you know, this may sound silly to you, but she was, she was allowing her song to change, allowing a different song of discontentment and, 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 and materialism to begin to shape her soul. And so it began to shape her thoughts and her heart. She shares this story. I'm not telling on her. And she had, I mean, everybody knows Home and Garden Television is not bad, Right? But it became a strong voice in her heart to where it became one of the few things that she could sing. So let me ask you, what did you sing this week? What did you sing this week? Let me ask you this. What do you want to sing about next week? Father, May we be a people, a church, who love you. May you turn our hearts of stone to be hearts of flesh. May you help our souls to thirst and hunger for righteousness, peace, and joy. May you change our soul's channel. Give us the wisdom and the practical understanding of how to do that so that our souls sing different songs that we're not known to be the whatever, but we're, when we walk into a room, peace goes into the room, hope goes into the room, joy goes into the room, righteousness goes into the room because our soul is just vibrating the resonance of your kingdom that everywhere we go, that our songs of hope resound. And that as we do that, may those songs catch on to our neighbors, 
and our neighborhoods until you are first in every heart and every home. Amen. You may be seated. Waterline, I love you. I love you. I love you.